Hey, in this video, we're going to go over the very basics of the Svelte framework by making a simple form. We'll be using the newest version at the time as well, version 5. And I'm going to assume you know nothing about Svelte, but you probably have some knowledge of JavaScript, HTML, and CSS at least. I'll be using Visual Studio Code to write and test these examples. This is a free code editor that also has a Svelte plugin that works great for writing Svelte apps. But if you're just learning, I suggest using the Playground on Svelte's website. It'll let you write code without having to go through the hassle of setting up your machine or your IDE. To start off, I have an app.svelte file. .svelte files are components, and you use components to render HTML for your page or your app. You typically have multiple component files, and each one will do a specific task. So for example, in the end, we're going to end up with a form input component a button component, and so on. This app component, though, will be the main starting point for this example. And as you can see, I have it set up with a full screen background image and a window for our future form. Components can optionally have a JavaScript or TypeScript script block on top, some HTML, and maybe some styles as well at the bottom. In the script block, any variables or function defined will only be available to this component. Same with any styles in the style block. The CSS definitions are scoped to that file only. So if you define like a style for an A element, it won't apply to your whole app, only to the component. We can easily add some more basic HTML to this page, like this, and some inline styles. But the real cool stuff is when you start making additional components. So here I also created a form input.svelte file. And this component's job is to just display and handle input elements. And we'll be able to just import the component every place we want to show a form input. So in here, let's just create a basic input for now. And back in our app, let's insert it twice below our heading. And you do that by just adding it as another HTML block. But notice though, it's uppercase and matches the file name. And also there's an import statement on top that is needed. Now we have two form inputs on our page, but of course we don't want them both to have the same name attribute. They usually need to be unique. And we also might want to set the value dynamically as well. So to make components dynamic, we can just add custom attributes to them in order to pass data like this. I'll also add a third input that'll be for a pre-answered question. Then to receive this data in the component, we use the spelt props rune, which looks like this. And better yet, we can destructure the incoming props like this instead. We can make the value attribute optional by giving it a default value here. And now these variables can be inserted into our HTML by putting them between a set of curly braces. And even better, if the variable names match the attribute names, you can just make this even shorter like this. Let's style our input a little nicer now too, so even though we show the input twice, because we are using it in a single component file, we only have one place we need to manage it. This is one of the great things about reusable components. We can also make this even more universal by allowing us to define the input type as well. So we can add a new prop called type and set the default to text, and then set that attribute below. Now back in our app, we can change the email input to an email type input instead, and even add a password input, all using the same component file. Let's do the same concept for a reusable button component. This component will need to type an on-click function and the button text. But if you know for sure your props will match the attribute names, we can do something really cool and just spread all the props into the element like this. By doing this, if we send a type, on click, class, style, disabled, or any other standard button attribute, it'll automatically be passed down here without having to list them all manually. The only one that is out of place would be the text for the button, but we can insert that by just doing props.text. And then finally, let's style our button as well. 
Now let's go back to our form and add the button. We'll set the text to submit and the type to button and include a blank on click function and we'll get back to that a little later. Now let's move on to an example of using logic in Svelte. First, let's create an array of values to display like this. Then above our form, let's list these in an unordered list with an each block. The each block is wrapped in curly braces and has a hashtag in the starting block and a slash in the ending block. In between the blocks, we'll just output a line item that will end up looking like this. Let's make our list styling look a little bit nicer as well. Now let's mess around with if statements. We can do that by maybe tracking how many questions the user has filled out and show a progress message if they aren't done filling out the form. We'll first need to track the values of each question. So let's create state variables for each one. The state rune in Svelte allows you to react to changes to those variables if needed. Then we need to set the value of the inputs to the variables. But we can't do it just like this though, because if the text changes in the box, the variable value won't change. For that to happen, we need to use the bind directive before value, like this. And this will allow the changes to flow back to the variable. And in order for binding to work in our component, we need to go into that file and set it to be bindable, like this. And also add a bind here as well. And since this isn't a simple prop to attribute conversion anymore, we have to go back to the long way of setting it. Now to see how this works, let's add a Svelte function that will fire off whenever that value changes. This is called the effect rune and you can use it if you ever want to do some action when a state variable changes. So we can simply console log name and now Svelte will log every time the name value updates. And as you can see, every keystroke is now getting logged. Another reactive function Svelte has is the derived rune. You can set this variable to be a state variable plus some sort of change to it, like doing math or concatenating strings like this. We want to use this, but it'll be a little bit more complex. So there's also a derived dot by rune that lets you specify a full on function to run. So let's create one called finished. It'll hold a number and it'll be the result of a derived function. In this function, we'll have a variable that tracks how many are done and then have it check each input value to see if it's blank. And if not, increase the count by one. And in the end, it'll just return it. And now below, we can have some HTML that shows the user how many is done. And we can give it a little bit of styling as well. And you can now see the number change as we fill out the form. Next, we can use a spell if statement to hide the status when they fill them all out. The if statement is similar to the each block with curly braces, the hashtag in the beginning, and the slash at the end. And now the message goes away when the form is filled out. We can also get crazy and disable the submit button until it's filled out. We can just add the disabled attribute to our button and have it be true or false depending on the count. And notice here how the value in curly braces can also be the result of a statement and not just a simple value. We don't need to do anything to our button component though, since we used the spread operator on the props. The new disabled prop will automatically get forwarded to the button for us. But in there, we do need to style a disabled button to look a little bit more different. And now the button is disabled until all the fields are filled out. Then one final thing, let's add another component that'll be a loading overlay when we click the submit button. We'd want to use this loader on all pages in our app, most likely. So first, let's create a universal state variable that will track whether to show the loader or not. In Svelte, you can use a .svelte.ts file to create reusable JavaScript code or modules. And the .svelte addition to the file name lets you access the reactive runes as well. So along with our other files, if we have a loading .svelte.ts file 
and in there export an object with a show property using the state room, we now can track that value and use it anywhere by just importing this file. To use this file, let's create a loader.svelte component, and in there, let's import our loading state, and let's create some HTML that will have a full screen transparent overlay with some words loading in the middle that do a little animation. And then we only want to show this if the loading.show is set to true. So wrap the whole HTML in a svelte if block like this. Then back on our app, we can include and import the loader component at the top of the HTML. And then we can have the submit button on click function set the loading.show property to true. And to use that, we need to import it from that module we made. So you can see it imported at the top. And let's also add a timer that turns it off after a, a second or so, so we're not stuck on it. And there we go. We see the loading component when we click the button, and we can turn it on or off whenever we want by just changing that show property. And that's about it for this video. I hope it helps some of you understand the basics of Svelte syntax and logic. There are many other things you can do in Svelte, of course. I suggest you check out their website for all the features. Or if someone has a specific topic they'd like me to go over in the future, just let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching.